Memory Jars by Caldecott Honoree Vera Broskull. On a hot, sweet, sticky July day, Frida went blueberry picking with her gran. Deep among the bushes, full of fat blue fruit, Frida ate as many as she picked. They tasted like sweet sunshine. They were the best right then, and they'd never been better. She ate until her fingertips were purple and her stomach felt like a giant blueberry. But still, there were so many left. Oh, I can't do it. I can't eat them all, moaned Frida. Calm down, French fry, said Gran. We can put them in a jar and save them. Oh, I use them for my special jam every year. It was your grandpa's favorite recipe. Frida remembered her grandpa eating toast every morning with glossy purple jam on it making sure it was spread all the way to the crust so every last bite was sweet. Frida remembered her grandpa. So if we save the berries in jars, they'll be just as good? asked Frida. Yeah, said Gran. The jars keep them preserved for a long time so we can eat blueberries in January if we like. Frida had an idea. She tried out, she tried her idea out on one of Gran's fresh chocolate chip cookies. It was very, very hot, very hard not to eat it. She put the cookie jar under her bed and said goodnight to Gran and sort of slept. The next morning she checked and it had worked. The cookie would be warm and yummy forever. She had saved it. Frida wondered what else she could save. She was going to need a lot more jars. Frida saved all kinds of things. Warm cookie, Halloween candy, a new stuffed animal tag still on, unbroken robin's eggs, poppies, un scuffed sneakers, brand new crayons, rocket pop, unmelted. Frida didn't want Jack, her best friend, on the entire planet to move to Arizona at the end of the month, and neither did he. And now he wouldn't. Mrs. Alexander's beautiful singing voice drifted over the neighborhood, as it did every Saturday afternoon straight into one of Frida's jars where the songs would live safe and never-ending. The cloud that looked just like a unicorn would never be pushed back into a mushy nothing by the wind. The laser-bright rainbow would never dim as the sun moved. The full moon, her favorite shape, would never fade away and leave the sky empty and dark, making Frida feel alone. She took the stars while she was at it. Finally, Frida's favorite things were tucked away in jars. Everything would be saved and safe, just the same, forever. Almost everything. Please? Well, all right, French fry. Anything you like. The neighborhood was very quiet as Frida and Graham went home. All that saving had made Frida hungry. The toast was warm and crunchy, but it was missing something, something sweet. She spread the jam all the way to the edges. It tasted like... Frida remembered.
On a cold, blustery day in December, Frida had breakfast with Gran. Oh, whoops, we ran out of jam, said Gran. Don't worry, said Frida. We can make more next summer. Then she took a bite. It was delicious, just like she remembered. The end? Question mark? And this is how you make a blueberry jam. Good night. I love you.